Hi, this is Kim with Prepping in Progress. Earlier this week, Steve talked about training with your bug out bag, but today I wanted to let y'all see what actually goes into one of our bug out bags. This one is mine, so let's dig in. Okay, when we're talking about bug out bags, a lot of people mean completely different things by using the same terminology. What I mean as a bug out bag may be completely different for somebody else. So I wanted to go into a little bit about what exactly is a bug out bag. Now, a bug out bag is specifically tailored for a bug out scenario when you're actually having to leave your primary location to go to a bug out location. Now, there's other kinds of bags, a 72 hour bag, a survivalist bag, a lone wolf pack, a inch bag, or a never coming home. All these different bags are tailored for different purposes. But today we're going to be talking about our bug out bag, which is tailored for our bug out plan. Okay, in considering our bug out bag, before you actually consider the bag itself, I want y'all to consider this. I've just got a simple map. Before you start packing your bag or even buying your bag, I want you first to consider where are you bugging out to and how are you going to get there how long is it going to take you to get there? Is it going to be by road or is it going to have to be through the woods? Considering that and actually marking out your route, an alternative route, and even an emergency route <laughs> to get to your location and estimating how much time it's going to take to actually get there. Now, a lot of times you better overestimate because you never know with weather and things like that will slow you down. Now, like I said, before you go and buy a bag, what I want you to do is actually buy what you want to take first and considering the essentials of survival and what you're going to actually put in your bag. Once you have all your equipment, then go out and buy the bag that is tailored for what you need. Instead of trying to either not have enough room or overstuff a bag that you with things you may not need. So let's talk about essentials of survival. We all know it, food, water, shelter. So we're going to go into that and pertains to a bug out bag. Now I have a few extra things besides just her basics. When you go down to food, I have a simple little kitchen set, something to boil water in or even just cook food into. I have nice little stainless steel because I don't like having disposable things. These are nice and good and sturdy utensils. An Esbit stove for cooking. And something I don't hear a lot of people talking about, but I pack in my bug out bag, I have scotch bright bats uh, with the ones with the soap already in them. If you're going to be eating out of your the food containers a long period of time, you want to be able to keep them clean because food does go rancid, it goes bad, and it will make you sick. And that's the last thing you want to do in a bug out scenario. Next is water. Water is life. You have to have redundancy in your bag in order to sustain water. You have to have a simple bottle to either collect water with. You can use a water bottle or a simple just plastic bottle to collect water with. But once you collect that water, you really need ways of filtering it. Now I have a different kinds of filtration methods. Uh, I've got my little Sawyer Mini in here. Uh, I've got another filter for this bottle. And I have water pur purification tablets. Now you can also use your cook set to boil water if you don't have all these, but like I said, redundancy is key. Once you have your bottle of water purified, I bought a camel pack so I could fill up a large amount of water and carry it with me long distances. Now I prefer getting the actual camel pack as opposed to the off brands. I find the off brands break down a lot more easier, so go ahead and spend the extra money to get an actual real camel pack. After food and water comes shelter. Now, <laughs> Steve got a little crazy with my shelter. I told him I needed cordage and he gave me cordage. <laughs> so, but all I have here is a simple tarp and a blanket uh, to set up a makeshift lean-to tent. But I also keep black trash bags. Uh, these can be great for creating temporary shelters, water catchment, uh, or even just putting over yourself as a temporary poncho. A million different uses for them. You can even stuff leaves inside of them and make a makeshift bed in order to get lifted off of the ground. There's a million different uses for keeping some heavy duty 
black trash bags. Along with sh shelter is you've got to keep warm. So I keep all my fire starting kits in a nice waterproof case. And yes, if you see in there, I've got my black and white fire starter kit it has become a big part of my dugout bag now because I just absolutely love how it performed. And don't, speaking of that, don't forget there's still some time to get into the January drawing for your very own uh, black and white fire starter kit. Just we'll link the, uh, the video at the end, but don't forget to get over there and follow the directions on how you can get in on to win this. Now you've got your food, your water, and your shelter. A couple of other things you really need to consider to add to your bag is hygiene and first aid. First aid, I keep just a small, I am not a medic, I just keep a very small first aid kit for wound care and medications and things like that. It's nothing major, it's nothing fancy, but I got packets for blister relief, but I've also keep medications and I found these little cool little baggies. They're, uh, they, I got them from a tattoo parlor that was going out of business. That's what they put their body jewelry in. And it was perfect for putting my medications in. Uh, but not just medications. Uh, if you're gonna have to be walking a long ways, you want to make sure you keep your electrolytes up. So I would also, on top of that, pack things like potassium and magnesium to help prevent cramps if you're gonna be traveling a long ways. Next to that is hygiene. I know nobody really thinks about it, but if you're on a very long bug out and you're sweaty and <laughs> needing to clean up or even just needing to go to the restroom, having a bar of soap, some wipes, hand sanitizer, um, we've got these really nifty, instead of carrying a huge thing of toilet paper, we went ahead and bought these uh, whisk wipes, I think that's how you say it, and you just add water to them and they extend out. Uh, let's see if I can open ones to show it to you what they look like. Because they, that's all they are. And you just add water and you've got a wet wipe. And so I thought they were a lot lighter weight because I'm trying to keep down my weight on my bag as possible. So those were a perfect solution to either baby wipes or a huge roll of toilet paper. All right, next we're going to be talking about tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, a few other things besides your basics I'm going to go over to add to your kit. I always pack clothing. Um, depending on the season, and you should always be checking your bucket bag and updating it, I pack extra socks, undergarments, uh, shirts, and even a sewing kit in there to make sure that I have something to change into. Say my clothing gets wet or whatever, I have something to change into. I also try to make sure that I pack a towel for the same reasons if you get wet or anything like that. But I also get a bit of camouflage um, fabric that I bought from just the fabric store. Uh, it was perfect for example, a really bright blue tarp if you saw. <laughs> and if for some reason I want to hide my location, maybe I'm way too close to the road that I feel comfortable with, even just having a little bit either of netting or just some camouflage fabric, just to break up all that blue that's very bright and visible. I want your pack to make sure it has a really good pair of work gloves in there. I don't care what kind of gloves that you are fond of, but if you're going through brush or anything like that or having to move things out of the way, I do not want everybody getting their hands all cut up. That can lead to infections and more problems in a bug out scenario. Also, a bandana. Perfect for filtering water. You want to at least get as much sediment and things like that out of your water before you put it through your filters. We'll let your filters last a lot longer. And as you can see, I'm putting all of these into bags. I'm hopefully trying to waterproof them as much as possible so they're nice and dry when I go to reach for them. We've all probably seen these. Hot hands. I keep a few of these in my bag just in case for really cold winter days like today. I've got something to help me keep me warm. A poncho for the cold weather. This is one of those real cheap ones, but you can go get a really expensive one if you want to. I just got a kind of cheap one. Sunglasses. I don't know if anybody thought about this or not, but I was thinking about it the other day just from the glare from the road while driving. 
But I figured while walking, and especially if there's snow or ice that's really glaring and reflecting, your eyes can actually become sunburned. And burning eyes and hurting eyes in that kind of scenario, it really messes with your vision, you're squinting, you're not being able to watch your surroundings as much as possible. So packing just even a cheap pair of sunglasses just to help protect your eyes. And also to protect other things, Arkansas, we have our fair share of insects that will carry you off to Never Never Land. And <laughs> so I try to keep some off-brand or any kind of mosquito repellent or just bug repellent in general. If you're going to be in the woods, you do not want to be woke up to being a feast of ticks. I keep a really good pair of binoculars, just being able to see a little bit further down the road for any kind of obstacles or anything. A good pair of binoculars can never go wrong. Uh, depending on the situation as whether this will work or not, I still want to keep it in my bag. It's a handheld GPS system. Like I said, the most important thing about a bug out is where are you headed. So we have waypoints put in here for our location which we are going to, but also checkpoints along the way if we have to deviate or anything like that. We can put them into our handheld GPS and use that to help us along with our roadmap. Communication is another big essential. Uh, I'm not the communication person. I know the basics, <laughs> but I'm still required to carry a radio in my bag. And he's been trying to teach me as much as possible <laughs> on how to use it. But it is essential to be able to communicate uh, or even just listen for a weather forecast if there's a big storm coming or anything like that. If you're still able to hear it, you should be at least trying to hear it. A few other tools we have. And I saw, um, I picked this up when I'm pretty cheap. Um, let see if I can get it to open, there we go. It's a lot lighter weight than I thought these were. I thought these were actually pretty heavy, so I was hesitant on buying one of these and overweighting my pack, but it was pretty lightweight. A Gerber multi-tool, multi-purpose. These two go hand in hand. I've got a full tang fixed blade knife. Not too big, not too small, just about the right size and a sharpener for it. Flashlight, every prepper loves them and I have a really good one, it's really high lumen, but it also has a dimmer switch on it if I don't want to put too bright where my location is. Everybody needs duct tape, but I got Gorilla Tape because <laughs> it's a lot lighter weight and I was able to find a little small spoil of it that's still good size and really good quality tape. It's great for patching holes on your tarps or anything like that, fixing them up and getting them ready again. If you're on an extended bug out, I would recommend this. If you're on a short bug out, probably not, but it couldn't go wrong to having some fishing equipment. We have little yo-yos, some fishing lines, and some lures and hooks. I recommend these mostly, especially the yo-yos, because you can set it and then go to sleep at night and maybe have fish the next morning without having to exert a lot of energy for it. Uh, you can also use the line and the hooks and things to make simple cane poles for fishing small creeks. I would recommend going with a variety of sizes of hooks. Not too big, not too small, because you know I know what kind of fish you might be catching. And last on the table is I try to keep extra ammunition for my EDC gun, uh, which part of your bug out should be your EDC, your everyday carry. Uh, and my everyday carry is a 9mm, so I make sure I keep 9mm ammo in my bug out bag. Now we've got everything loaded into our bags. We're ready to put our food in, but we've kind of run out of time, but we're hoping to do another video on what kind of foods you should bring on a bug out, or just ideas that you may have not have thought of about bug out foods and different kinds of options you may have. But this is our bug out bag we have so far. Thank you so much for joining, and please don't forget to like and subscribe.